Life's a painting. You are the frame. As a deist, a state akin to sleep is a term coined by Neville Goddard, which refers to the hypnotic trance-like state we all go through just before we fall asleep. This is the ideal window for creation and impressing our subconscious mind with the new suggestions as the mind removes the locks of rational thinking and the floodgates to new suggestions are open. Our subconscious mind is responsible for coordinating and orchestrating 99% of everything in our environment, also including what goes on inside our very own body. It is the central powerhouse that makes us blink, makes our hearts beat, and our lungs breathe. The subconscious is stubborn and powerful. It executes instructions without fail. However, these instructions within the deep recesses of our being can be altered carefully and systematically. The actual instructions in the plain form are hidden and locked away from the conscious world or never got out the world of Caesar to prevent any accidental changes. Imagine the dangers of accidentally turning off or deleting the programming that makes our hearts beat or our lungs breathe. It would simply be catastrophic and therefore protection mechanisms are in place to prevent such accidental changes. Unfortunately, this very protective mechanism is also what makes any change, even intentional ones, kind of difficult. It resists the positive changes as much as it does the negative ones because the subconscious doesn't judge its paradigms with adjectives such as positive or negative. Its duty is only to powerfully execute the programming that has been set, what the judge or the conscious mind has asked it to do. The subconscious talks to the conscious through shadowy metaphors. A short while ago, I spoke of how the subconscious is locked or hidden away from the conscious mind. I meant this in a sense that you can't read your paradigms like an open book, like you would otherwise read the statute or any other book that is in a fairly obvious, transparent and direct manner. The subconscious communicates in the language of 3D events. What you experience is an indicator of what you believe. The beliefs themselves aren't as apparent as your own physical existence. You don't touch, see, feel hear or smell your beliefs directly. Whatever happens to be its intrinsic language, assuming there is even a language in the first place, it is simply out of the scope of conscious mind. For example, say you have negative beliefs surrounding money, that it is difficult to earn money. This belief becomes apparent based on what your 3D is showing you. It is the lack of money that reveals to you what beliefs you need to work on. The subconscious is heavier than the conscious mind 
in a metaphorical sense. You can't just push it around and play with it like you do with your conscious mind. Your conscious thoughts can be toyed around with instantly. One minute you can think of something sad and then one minute something happy and then back to sad. Note that I said think of and not think from. You need not feel. You can repeat this process oscillating to and fro indefinitely in matters of just seconds or minutes. Try this short exercise. Think of two random objects and then keep switching your attention between the two as fast as possible. Let's assume two mundane everyday objects, say a red cap and a blue cap. Bring to your mind's eye the red cap, then after a second the blue cap. After that, bring the red cap back again and then the blue cap again. See how easy it is to access the conscious brain, how easy it is to influence that part. However, your underlying beliefs associated with the red cap and blue cap won't change in the process and that would require additional work. In fact, it is this flickering, unpredictable and chaotic nature that also makes our 3D reality interesting. This is what makes films entertaining as they're aimed towards tapping into a range of contrasting human emotions in an unpredictable fashion. However, you can't toy around with your subconscious paradigms in a similar fashion. It is therefore heavier, like I mentioned before, and has more inertia. Inertia is resistance or tendency against any kind of change be it positive or negative. The term is commonly used in physics. A heavier box requires more force to be tossed around and therefore has higher inertia, whereas a lighter box requires less force and therefore has lower inertia. Now replace the term box in the metaphor with your beliefs and paradigms and the term force with affirmations and manifestation related practices. Whatever our subconscious paradigms are, they tend to exert resistance before being replaced with the opposite. This resistance can manifest itself in several ways. It can exhibit itself at the level of practice or at the level of 3D or both. At the level of practice, say you are affirming positively regarding an SP and then immediately being flooded with the thoughts of a previous SP with whom you've had negative experiences. This one is easier to deal with as you can easily distinguish the thoughts from what you call yourself. However, occasionally things going wrong or what's commonly referred to as the purge is something when life shows you your previous beliefs, sometimes even in an exaggerated fashion. Is the old paradigms trying to fight back? This is when we commonly falter and give in to the illusion of 3D reality. Going through the process of facing this contrast, all while not getting negatively influenced, is what separates a conscious creator from an unconscious one. Getting involved with manifesting trivial stuff just to keep the ball rolling is one of the most sustainable techniques I've found that has helped me in my journey. It doesn't matter how long or how great things you've manifested in the past. It's very easy to fall back into the trap that causality lies outside of us. This is because the 3D itself was created 
by God to forget its own infinite nature so that it can rediscover, experience different flavors of life through trial and error through this limited scope called human existence. And this limited nature is also part of the enjoyment for if the entirety of creation was experienced instantaneously then nothing would be left for us to enjoy. There is beauty in experiences of joy only because it is flanked with disappointments. It's like we've been staring into the painting for so long that we forget that there's a frame of I amness holding the picture in its place. But then you can't admire its beauty without looking at the painting. So you must do both. Look at it and then dis disengage. But you can't just choose one and stay there for too long. You can't permanently escape the 3D because that's where you will enjoy your manifestations. It isn't engaging and then quite paradoxically disengaging with the 3D when we are able to optimally create and at the same time enjoy the fruits of our labor.